brother walking the line, he keeps tight. Look to the left and the right, it's a might. I don't waste time with the mediocre below average when I get the king in sight. I don't waste time with the mediocre below average when I get the king in sight. Well, happy day, good people. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Snap Political. So glad you're with me. Hopefully, you are enjoying the content on here, guys. I'm giving you a little mixture music, lifestyle, politics. Let's go. Okay, guys. So, I know you have seen the story about the two teens that hit and killed the sheriff. And I cover quite a bit of content on my channel about youth and families because that is um, an area that I'm degreed in. Before we dive into this video, I wanna give a little background about me because you know that I'm an artist and a YouTuber, but you don't know about my professional side. So my master's degree is in developmental psychology. I have a 501c3 for kids who have emotional behavior challenges as well as academic deficits. I've been working with children and families for over 20 years years. That is why I feel so strongly about the youth. And I say the things that I say because I have experience, I have knowledge, and I'm degreed in an area. And also I have um, quite a bit of study and expertise when it comes to abnormal behaviors. Now, I'm not a clinician. I do not have a degree in clinical psychology. However, I can treat symptomology of those students. I can't make diagnoses, cannot prescribe medication. But working with youth from Title I schools, low-income families, and with mental and psychological disorders that I do work with those types of youth. Not just limited to, but that has been my, um, that has been the kids that I've worked with for quite some time. I have a passion for them. So getting into this video, I want to say, and I don't know if you, if you're not in the field, you won't know, but this is the DSM-5. And this is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. So people who have <clears throat> been diagnosed with psychological disorders or any mental disorder, it is derived from this book. It used to be the, the DSM-4. They changed it about 2013 when they started making changes in diagnoses, bipolar disorder. They combined some things. They changed some things. So that's why the DSM-5 developed and created no longer the DSM-4. So when I see kids, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the time, my observation and assessment of the kid is spot on. And it comes from experience and education and degrees. Okay, degree. My BA is in communication, hence what I'm doing right now. So <clears throat> um, I, I just want to preference that because I'm going to read you some things in this book in regards to behavior characteristics of. But let's look at this because I want to point some things out to you. And it just saddens me. It really does. I have a passion to work with youth and of all ethnic groups. I'm not just focused on black children. That is my, my um, race, but I am not focused specifically only on black kids. I have a worldview. I started out working with kids in the ESOL program and I've worked with kids from Russia, Finland, Asia, um, Japan, you know, all over the globe. And I love it and that's what my calling is. It's from a worldview. And when I see youth and I see these things that's going on, I feel sorry for them. I feel sad because I know it starts in the home and that's what developmental psychology is about. We study life, we study development over the lifespan. And when I see youth, I don't care what your color or race is, I just feel a way, especially when you are performing at a lower level of your potential. So let's get into this video, good people, and we're gonna talk about this. Teens accused of killing retired police chief laugh in court. They're the teens accused of intentionally mowing down a retired man out for a bike ride, recording the killing and laughing as they sped away. <laughs> Now Horrible. there's an uproar over their behavior Horrible. in court yesterday. 18-year-old Jesus Ayala and 16-year-old Zamir Keys were seen laughing during a hearing in Las Vegas. A reporter says he saw one defendant. So I'm going to stop right here real quick. Short video. Stop. So we know that typically on the normative spectrum, which is the general consensus of people who function at a certain level who do not have any identified psychological diagnoses, let me say that, <clears throat> will, will not laugh. So their emotions meet the, they have, they display the proper emotion or what's appropriate or how they pretty much to meet the situation and the, the, the experience, what's going on right here. So if someone hurts, someone, you know, is feeling someone has been killed someone typically we're going to show remorse we're going to be empathetic we're going to show sympathy and laughing is the exact opposite of that correct didn't actually 
flip off the slain man's wife and daughter as they sat in the courtroom. They're charged with murder in the death of 64-year-old Andreas Propes, a former police chief from California who was enjoying his retirement in Vegas. This in is his so memory, horrible. his widow wore his Apple Watch to court. You can see it's still shattered from the day he was run over. The Apple Watch automatically notified police. The owner of this Apple Watch has taken a hard call and is not responding to their watch. New video is emerging from that terrible day. The suspects can also be seen allegedly driving into a 72-year-old bike rider Horrible. who survived and called 911. Horrible. He ran me over on purpose. I was oh. watching in my rearview mirror on my bicycle. Okay. He could have killed me. Also just released audio of Jesus Ayala in the back seat of a police car right after his arrest. His cocky attitude is shocking. Is it really that serious? Yeah, it is. I'll be out in like 30 days. Oh, bitch. You might be out of juvie in 30 days and move over to an adult jail. Because that's how bad it is. It's just a f***ing uh, idiot run. Slap on the wrist. Much to the apparent shock of the teens, they are being tried as adults. So expect more than a slap on the wrist. Okay, so let's look at their faces and facial expressions. And I want to go back really quickly because one is... 16 i think it's the let me go back here just for a second i want to show you something wait here so look at his face look at his eyes here we can see that, that that's not the sign of, of remorse or someone that feels sorry or shows empathy or sympathy when when you see someone is hurting. So let's just so in order for you to lack remorse, in order for you to lack sympathy, then there's something going on inside of your heart that's disconnecting the emotion where you you're, you're not, you know, you're, you're not able to display. The other young man over there thinks it's funny, thinks it's cute, which is. Once again, that's coming from an abnormal view or abnormal development. That's not pro-social. It, is, it, it, it isn't. Okay, so let's keep going. <clears throat> Here. Wait a minute. I can get them both. Here. Wait. Can I get them both? It's going to be blurred. Please. Okay. There. So, this is the 18-year-old. This is the 16-year-old, I believe. So, I truly feel like if there's a pack, then there's still going to be someone that's primarily the leader. It's not the 16-year-old kid. It, it, it's not. I've, I've looked at this video. I've looked at several other videos. And I feel, and what I know to be correct, to be true, I don't see this young man being the one who is the leader it's the 18 year old not to say that this young man does not have some abnormal behaviors going on of course obviously where they are is abnormal we know that what is abnormal the opposite of normal is is completely opposite of what is deemed to be <clears throat> appropriate to be feasible when you when you exude and you display certain emotions for an experience or a situation is this isn't it now let's go here and i think that was the pretty much the last of it I want to see if I can get them walking out of court. The apparent shock of the teens, they are being tried as adults. So expect more than a slap on the wrist if they are found guilty. And look at his face. Look at the 16-year-old's face. His eyes look very different to me than the eyes of this, this kid here. Once again, I'm not making a clinical diagnosis. I'm giving you observations and symptomology here. Now... When you look in his eyes, to me, I'm not saying he's showing remorse, but he seems to just have some type of, I don't know, a softer, like puzzled, disconnected look. This kid over here, with the tattoo on his face, he looks very angry. He looks like he's very, whatever is on, on the inside of him is, is nothing positive. He looks angry. He looks like he, he, he could have hate in his heart. And I want to... 
uh, let's see, is that it? Yeah, I want to, it starts at the home, good people. It starts at the home, no matter which way you flip the pancake, no matter what you put on top of the pancake, butter, put your maple syrup, your syrup, strawberries, it doesn't matter. No matter how you turn it and flip it, when you put, it starts out in the box. And before you open that box and put your bowl and your watered eggs and everything else, where did it start? It starts at the foundation in the box. That's what's going on here. It's the foundation. I haven't heard them mention the parents yet. You don't hear nothing about the parents being in court. You don't hear nothing about the parents being um, um, interviewed or anything. I haven't seen that interview yet. And I've seen this several on several different news stations have not heard about the parents, where the parents at. So to me, that lets me know that either A, they're in low income families. And let me be clear, there's nothing wrong with being in a low income family. I work with lots of kids whose families economic situation they were still had character they had heart and even though they may have had some other emotional challenges it was still different because the parent was around available and responsible and and, and, and reached out to outsource re, outside resources to help them navigate the space so let me be clear with that but I do want to say when it comes to tendencies that's something that's re prevalent and relevant in the research so I'm going to say that for one. Also, they could or could not have come from single parent homes, but that's also another factor. Single parent homes. I'm telling you what I know to be a fact. Research. Go and pull it up yourself, good people. And they are, their grades are low. They are problematic in school, given their parents purity. And either A, the parents are around, living their own life, could not be concerned. It's okay. Or B, doing the best they can with what they have and not able to tend to the kid all the time and maybe aren't seeking outside resources for support. S what, 16 and 18, now the boy is legally considered an adult. We already know mentally that they, they ain't there. But I'm just giving you statistics. I'm just giving you a rundown of what's going on here. Now, I am almost positive, almost positive, because the research shows that kids who are pro-social, who make good grades, are less likely to engage in abnormal behavior less likely didn't say that they don't didn't say they couldn't less likely why because they have a stronger support system they have things that they enjoy um enjoy doing they're around pro-social peers they're going to they're going to socialize and navigate with kids like them because it's positive they see positive outcomes that that's leading to rewards these kids here are not that's why you see problematic kids typically hanging with other problematic kids. So in school, I would love to hit, sit and talk with some of their teachers if they're even in school now. The 18 year old could have dropped out at 17 or whatever the, the age is legally by the state where they stay. That was what uh, Vegas. So what is it? 17, <clears throat> 16 year old is probably in and out of school and has been for a very long time. So poor grades. Home environment is below par. Parents did not do their due diligence and getting outside resources for them. And I'm going to say that because if so, they wouldn't be where they are right now. Period. Period. I did another video on here where the parent was like, she keeps trying to get the police to come and get her son because he's breaking the law and she is, is done. She can't, she's done everything she possibly can. That parent has been utilized and she's been trying to utilize her resources and she's just fed up. I get that. So that's that, that's that, that end of the spectrum. What about these two here? What about these two here? So I want to read something in the DSM-5 that describes pretty much, and it's so many of these disorders where it could be some, it could be, it, it could be a couple of other disorders in here. However, working with children who have been diagnosed with conduct disorder, their behaviors meet the symptomology for kids who have been diagnosed with conduct disorder. I want to read to you exactly what the DSM-5 say. <clears throat> The diagnostic criteria for conduct disorder, a repetitive and persistent pattern of behavior in which the basic rights of others or major age appropriate societal norms or rules are violated as manifested by the presence of at least three of the following 15 criteria in the past 12 months from any of the categories below. So we don't know how long this has been going on. We don't know how long. However, it didn't start yesterday. We do know that. So I'm not going to read the specifics, but I'm just going to give you the bolded because under each category, they live, they identify what those patterns of behaviors look like. So one, aggression to people and animals, destruction, destruction of property, deceitfulness or theft, serious violation 
of rules. I'm not going to go into specifics because it's a, it's a lot. Lack of remorse or guilt, callous lack of empathy. That's like a, a specific. I want to read you this. Diagnostic features. The essential feature of conduct disorder is a repetitive and persistent pattern of behavior in which the basic rights of others or major age appropriate societal norms or rules are violated, which is what we just saw. These behaviors fall in the four main Groupings, aggressive conduct that causes or threatens physical harm to other people or animals. Non-aggressive conduct that causes property loss or damage, deceitfulness or theft. And then it goes on. Now, I want to talk about the development because depending on the onset, which when it starts of a behavior is going to determine, could determine a lot of times it will determine the trajectory of where this kid is going to to be at let's say 15 or 16 we don't know when the onset was there's there they got a track record a paper trail I'm sure based off the schools they've been in I guarantee you they have a paper trail and we can go back to see where the onset started the earlier the onset the more likely that they're going to be an increase of a negative trajectory if there are no resources they don't get help and they don't have at least that one person that can stand in the gap for them and help steer them because it just takes one person, good people. It just takes one person. And it does not have to be a family member. How about that? It can be a janitor. It can be your, your um, next door neighbor, an adult. It could be a friend on the bus. It could be a friend at school that's pumping into you. You know, come on, let's do this, man. No, we're going to go. We're going to go to class. I mean, so it, it, it's a wide variety. It could be your pastor. It could be a youth leader. It could be a clerk that they see when they go to this grocery store. I'm, I'm telling you, it only has to be one person. Now, I'm only going to read you a few things that I highlighted because I want you to kind of just get a full understanding of this because I know this enraged a lot of people. And I, I really, truly felt horrible for what they did but we have to understand the mindset of these two individuals and they truly need help and they need help they needed help for a long time the onset of conduct disorder may occur as early as the preschool years and I know that's very young to say oh this kid's gonna have diagnosed is going to have or could be diagnosed later on with that but look at how early as when you can start seeing symptoms and I didn't read all the symptoms. I just gave you an overview and topic of aggression to people and animals. So let's read a symptom. Often bullies, threatens, or intimidates others. Often initiates physical fights. Okay. And I just read you another topic. Destruction of property. So, but the first significant symptom usually emerges during the period from middle childhood through middle adolescence. Middle childhood. That is a, like coming on the, the end of your elementary school going into middle school. That's pretty much the start of onset of adolescence. Um, oppositional defiant disorder is a common precursor to the childhood onset type of conduct disorder. So if you see these in school, how what was their behavior like in school? Were they defying their um, authority figures? How were they with their parents or whoever was raising them? And I definitely would not be surprised if these kids were in group homes, if their parents were, were have been removed and or they were foster kids. Uh, let's see. Oppositional divine disorder is a common precursor to the childhood onset type of conduct disorder. Conduct disorder may be diagnosed in adults. However, symptoms of conduct disorder usually emerge in childhood and adolescence. And the onset is rare after the age of 16. So what is that saying? Typically, these behaviors are going to start as could start as early as preschool. And I used to think before I, you know, when I worked in the school system, before I got my master's degree in developmental psychology, applied developmental psychology, I was like, how, you know, you hear certain things from teachers. And I'm like, how can you tell this kid? He's only three years old. But no, that is when because at three and two, people call it the terrible twos. It's been called the terrible twos. And that's because at two, they have the tantruming phase. There are some things that are normal. When you're our child at two years old, tantruming is part of it. But how long is the kid tantruming? And what's going on during the tantrum? Okay, now, <clears throat> so if this starts sooner, this is when you need to get the help right away. I'm early intervention. I am. I don't, when you start seeing problems, if you're not paying attention to the kid prior to that, then you're already a day late and a dollar short. As soon as you start seeing some things and you're noticing you're doing, you're doing certain things because the way parents discipline, every, every kid is different. So the things that you do for your child for, to help them bring them back around may be different from what this parent does 
to bring their child back around. But if you're doing something and you're trying to implement praise and consequences for negative behavior, then you need to seek some outside resources. And it's okay. It is okay. It is okay. It's encouraged. It's encouraged. Please know it's encouraged. The early onset type predicts a worse prognosis and an increased risk of criminal behavior conduct disorder and substance related disorders in in adulthood so like I just said they're saying that the earlier this starts the prognosis for it to be for them to have an abnormal going into the abnormal spectrum in in later adolescent adulthood is is likely individuals with conduct disorder are at risk for later mood disorders anxiety disorder post-traumatic stress disorder impulsive control disorder psychotic disorders somatic symptom disorders and substance related disorders as adults I wanted to read that to you because I wanted to give a little background and understanding for you to have some understanding into the mindsets of these youth. And we must continue to pray for them. We must continue to pray for them. We must continue to pray for the educators and other professionals who may have tried to plant seeds in these two young men along the way. Because I am just not going to say that they didn't ha- they didn't have any help and they didn't have anybody that was willing to pour and plant seeds in them. I just I don't believe that. I just don't believe that. I would like to know where the parents are and if the parents have been in their lives because by me not hearing of the parents, by me not seeing the parents anywhere on any of these videos I've seen from them, I'm like, okay, either they were in a group home, they ran away, they were in foster they were in foster care or they have become juvenile delinquents. But they got a car. They drive in a car with insurance we're going to say they had insurance. Somebody's car. Whose car was it? How to get the car? How to get money to put in the car? You know, fill up the gas tank. Were they working? I mean, so many questions have ran through my mind. But I want to say I just had to I had to dig a little deeper and pull my book out. I was like, OK, I know this, this behavior. <clears throat> and seeing this just made me even more, you know, remorseful for them, but also Wanting them to be consequented for their behaviors because they do have their own mind. They can think for themselves. So they have no cognitive <clears throat> disability in regards to the ability to know right from wrong. There is some cognitive distortion here going on. We can say that. But there is there is no impairment when it comes to their cognitive um, development. We can see that they were well aware. And that's what I mean. They were aware and they knew exactly what they were doing. They should be penalized after they go through juvenile, they need to go straight to adult jail and spend the rest of their lives there. They need to be rehabilitated and hopefully they can get rehabilitation in jail because they didn't get it when they were free. <clears throat> That's a harsh, that is a harsh sentence. But when you see the callousness, the lack of remorse, the emotional withdrawal, then I think the only way for them to get the support, the help that they need is going to be someone from the outside coming in and their willingness to want to change. Let's be let's say that first, because if they're not willing to change their heart and get the help that they need and address all the deep rooted anger, hate, you know, and what's going on on the inside, it's never going to change. And they need Jesus. And I'm being serious. Ain't no sarcastic about that. They need Jesus. They do. They need Jesus because when you have the love of God on the inside there's no way you can do that that's why we have to continue to pray for them I know it a lot of people are angry and I was very angry when I saw this but on the other side I already knew what we were working with because that is my area when it comes to youth families and my degreed area and I just you know I feel sorry for them so please pray for these these young men good people that they are able to be rehabilitated incarcerated and it may take them many years to come around and realize what what they truly did and 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 start peeling off the layers of abuse of abandonment of whatever else some of the issues are because there I just cannot see them growing up in a loving home to do that all right good people Let's get in the comment section. I want to know what your views are, how you feel about this, especially my parents who have youth and who talk to their youth and whose youth will come to them and talk to them about things that they're feeling and emotions and, you know, all of that. And and do you provide that type of environment for your kids? Do your feel, kids feel comfortable to come to you and share things with you? Because that's so important. That's so important. So let's talk good people. I love you guys. I appreciate your support. If you're finding value in the content, and I keep saying that because that's what it's about. It's not just about you guys coming to see me. It's, it's, it's what I'm bringing to the table and what do you want more of? All right. See you in the next video. Yeah.